Berryman H.J. is a bivocational minister with the Church of Pentecost USA, Inc. He is the pastor in charge of the Hawaii Military Base District. He serves as a captain in the USA Army, and currently he is stationed at Triple Army Medical Center as an oral maxillofacial surgical resident. He is married to the love of his life, Dora Berman Ajay, and they are blessed with three children, Enna, Adipa, and Oye. Now, let us welcome Pastor Berman Ajay. Three scriptures after which we share the word of God. And I'll be giving you a lot of scriptures. We're not going to read them. I'll give them, I'll summarize them for you. But I'll throw a lot of scriptures at you today. Write them down, go read them, and, and God will give you revelations in the knowledge of him. Amen. Oh, amen. amen. Our first scripture is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to 17. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 17. And I read. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. Verse 16. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Amen. Then let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. And I read, Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled either by spirit or by word or by letter, as it is from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the fallen away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Verse 5. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things, and now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time? Verse 7. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Verse 9. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, verse 10, and with all unrighteousness, deception, among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. Amen. The last scripture we're going to read is Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21, verse 36. The gospel according to Luke chapter 21 verses 36. Luke chapter 21, verses 36, and I read, Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Amen. So last week, we did establish that 
based on the prophetic writings and the revelations God gave to Daniel, we are in the end days. And we did talk about the fact that God revealed to Nebuchadnezzar in his dream a statute which symbolized the various kingdoms, that is from Daniel chapter 2, the various kingdoms that will come to earth. And Brother Eugene, you can show us the, 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 the first picture of the statute. And in the statute, he saw a, 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 an image huge, very magnificent, and the head was gold, and, and the, the shoulders and the arms were made of silver. The abdomen and the thighs were made of bronze, and the legs were made of iron, but the feet was a mixture of iron and clay, and the image had 10 toes. And we discussed the various kingdoms that have come through the earth and we did establish that the head was Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom, the Babylonian Empire. That the, the chest with the arms was the Persian, the Medes and the Persian Empire that came out of Iraq. Nebuchadnezzar was based in Iraq. The Persians were based out of Iran. And those empires ruled the world. They dominated. Then came the Greek Empire, which was led and established by uh, uh, Alexander the Great through his conquest. But our understanding is that this all came because of prophet, prophetic timing of God. God had established the kingdoms of men all the way to the end. And we did establish that the, the legs which were made of iron was the Roman Empire. And the empire came and expanded and dominated for a long time. But after that empire was the feet which was mixed with iron and clay. And that symbolized the divided kingdom. And that is the world we are in. So we did establish that we are in the end of time. We are at the feet. We are at the feet. And you must have that understanding. Because if you don't, things that you should watch out for, you'll be ignorant of. And you can easily be deceived. The whole goal is for you to understand that God is sovereign. And he has established the domain and the influence of men to a point in time. The earth is going to end one day. Even scientists talk about it. They either tell you that there's going to be a solar burst out and the earth will basically become co consumed. Or they tell you there is a black hole somewhere which is basically enveloping planets. And one day the earth will be enveloped as well. Or they tell you that because of global warming, all the ice at the polar regions will melt and the world will be flooded. Even science is telling you that the world is about to end. But before science, God had already told us that these kingdoms will come and after that, the earth will end. Time will end. And we must understand what is happening because unfortunately, or fortunately for us, we are the feet mixed kingdoms. And one of the major things that is yet to happen, one of the major things after Jesus died and resurrected, one of the major events, even the apostles, Paul, Peter, James, and John, were looking out for was the rapture. Even them, they knew that we are almost getting to the end. And the major event yet to happen for the church is called rapture. Rapture simply means to be snatched, to be kidnapped, to be taken away. And that is one of the things the church must be ready for. You and I must be ready for Jesus coming to rapture us. And I'm going to give a timeline after which I'll focus on the rapture and I'll focus on the Antichrist. But Brother Eugene, there is the timeline, you can show us the timeline and I'll use it to give an overview before, before I just narrow in on the rapture. So there is a timeline. If you read the, the prophetic writings of Daniel, as well as the book of Revelation, look at this carefully. So this is Jesus' death. This is basically from this all the way to the second coming and the final judgment. And from this, we know Jesus came. Now the only major event from now to the tribulation is the rapture. The only major event we are expecting to happen from now till the great tribulation for seven years is the rapture. 
after the rapture, there is seven years of tribulation, led and basically driven by the Antichrist, till Jesus' second coming. Then we will go into the millennium rule of Christ. So I know I'll go through all this before next week. But for today, my focus is here because you must understand this and make sure, make sure that this you qualify for. Because what is about to be unleashed on the earth, you don't want to be part of it. No matter what it would take you, my brother, my sister, make sure you understand the rapture, you are ready for it, and if it happens today, you're going. So as I said, the rapture simply means to be, to be, to be snatched. And it has, it has a French background. Uh, and it, it, it is, you won't find the word rapture written in scripture per se. But what it stands for has been described vividly in the Bible. So the word itself, you will not go and read and say Jesus will come and rapture us. But every meaning of that word you can find in the Bible. And if you remember when Jesus was with his disciples in John chapter 14, verse 1 to 3, he says that, do not let your heart be what? Be troubled. Believe in God and believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you that I go to prepare a place for you and I will come and what? Take you. And where I am, you will also be. So Jesus himself told us that, listen, I'm going to be, I'm going to be ascended. I'm, I'm going to go to heaven. And when I get there, I'm preparing a place for you. And when I am ready, I will come and take you to myself. And you will always be with me. So that is a promise of Jesus. And how is it going to be fulfilled? And that is what Paul and especially if you're reading about end times, you can never ignore the writings of Paul. He bridges Daniel prophecies and revelation. There are things you will only understand because he gave us the vivid descriptions of it by revelation. So Paul was saying that, listen, as the church is on earth now, a day is coming that everyone who believes in Jesus will hear the sound of an archangel. It will be a shout that every Christian, every believer will hear. And after that, those who have died in Christ will resurrect with a new body and they will be caught up to Christ in the heavens. So Jesus, the rapture, Jesus is not coming to the earth. Jesus is not coming where? To the earth. He's not going to land on the earth. The earth is not going to see Jesus. What is going to happen is that he will come to the skies. And by skies, I mean heaven. And what will happen instantaneously is that everybody who have died in Christ will resurrect with a heavenly body. And when they resurrect with a heavenly body, they will be caught up from the earth to Christ in the skies. And those of us who believe in him, those of us who believe in him, we will also be transformed instantaneously. We will gain heavenly bodies right away. This flesh will be no more. It will be all of a sudden, your body is transformed to an angelic body, to a heavenly body. And now you can move from the earth and live. And we will gather to Christ in the skies. And he will take us to heaven. Are you following me? So if you meet a Jehovah Witness and they tell you you will not go to heaven, what they will tell you is that no. They will jump right away to the second coming of Christ. Meaning Christ is going to come to the earth. And we are going to rule with him. But they forget that before that, we go to Christ in heaven, and that is the rapture. And the qualification to be raptured is that you must believe in Jesus Christ. You must be saved. You must be saved. 
And I'm telling you, it is the next major event going to happen for the church. The next thing going to happen is the rapture. I want to emphasize that into your soul. Because if you miss the rapture, it's going to be terrible. It's going to be terrible for the earth. And some of you will be asking yourself, because I know you're intellectuals, how can this be? How can people just vanish? Let me tell you, an airline took off about how many years ago? About six years ago and vanished. And science could not explain it. It just vanished off the radar. And it vanished in an area with military raiders that they tell you that you can go as low as you can. It should pick you. It vanished. And still, we don't know where it went. And the world has moved on as if nothing would happen. That is how it's going to be. All of a sudden, people will vanish and they can't explain it. They will give probables. And let me give you some of the things they have already started saying. They will tell you it's a nuclear event. People just disintegrated because of nuclear activity in their body. And it's true. If you put uranium there, it starts shrinking by itself. You keep dividing and it goes away. So clearly, they have things they will use to explain to you. And the world will move on as if nothing happened. But for us who know, especially those listening to me today, you will know. When you put on the news and they tell you there is a major event happening across the world, people are vanishing. You right away remember I was listening on Facebook one day and there was this preacher talking about rapture. Is it the rapture? You attempt to explain it, but the world will tell you, no, 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 no. It is not because they can't believe. But for you who have tasted of this, you know it's true. You know it's true. So a day is coming. We will be caught up to Christ in heaven. And why the rapture? Why the rapture? Why will Christ come and take the church away? There are several reasons. Number one is for you to understand that the church is the bride of Christ. What is the church? Oh, the church is what? The bride of Christ. So Christ is basically taking his bride onto what? Himself. And number two, the rapture is an avenue for God to take us believers and reward us. Hallelujah. So he's taking us out of this world and his goal is that the church must leave the world. The world is about to end. But number two, what they have done, I must reward them. What they have done. So when we go to Christ, the Bible says that every man must appear before the judgment seat of Christ. This is not Christ judging the world. It's Christ judging us believers. Every one of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that we will be rewarded according to what we did in our bodies. And it's called the Bema seat, if, if you're interested in theological jargons. So we are raptured and we go with Christ to where? Where are we going? Or oh, to where? Where are we going? Or oh, where are we going? Heaven. So if someone tells you you're not going to go to heaven, look the person there and say, no, I'm going to heaven. I'm going to be raptured. Maybe you are not going to be raptured. That's why you think you're not going to heaven. But after I'm raptured, Christ is taking me where? To heaven. And when we get to heaven, I am going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Every believer will stand. And that seat is not to condemn you. It's not to do what? It's not to condemn you. There is not about heaven or hell because you are already where? In heaven. So he's not going to condemn you, but rather he's going to con commend you for what you did in his name. Hallelujah. And the example they use to illustrate this is, is when you go to the Olympics 
And they, they said that the, 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 the first person stands higher, the second, and the third. And after the race, they will all come and stand there and they will give them medals for what they have achieved. And that is what is going to happen to believers. And I'll spend a little time and go into this because I want you to go there and receive a great commendation. Oh, I want, I don't want you to appear before the throne of Christ and be ashamed because you know you did not do anything. You know there's no commendation for you. It's like you go for, for, for race. Those of us who, who are not good at sports and they did a race and they run and you, you are the last person in the race. If they gather the people to come and commend them, do you even try and come and stand near where they are commending people? No. Some people will even say, no, I'm done. I'm leaving. I don't want to even be closer. But here you can't go anywhere. And it's not because those who are going to be commended were different than you. They lived their life in such a way that Christ must honor them. Oh, hallelujah. And we are not going to be honored with perishable things. When we go, when we are raptured and we are being rewarded, he's going to reward us with incorruptible crowns. And in scripture, they've come up with five crowns. I believe there will be more. I strongly believe there will be more. But they've described ways that you can earn a crown. First, make sure you're going to be raptured. That is the critical part. But in addition to that, make sure you live your life in such a way that you will receive a crown. You will receive a crown. And there's a verse I'll, I'll, I'll give to you. We are not going to read it. I'll summarize it for us. That, that is First Corinthians. Chapter 3, verse 10 to 13. I just want you to write it down. And you can read it yourself. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10 to 13. And Paul, in writing to the church in Corinth, told them, Listen, we shall all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And every man's work will be judged by fire. Anyone who worked, who built it with gold, his work will pass through and what will happen? It will shine. Some people build with silver, with precious stones. It will go through the fire and it will shine. But others will come, they build with wood. And as it's going through the fire, right before their eyes, all their works crumbles down. Others build with hay, with, with basically dried leaves. And as their work goes through the fire, everything will be bent away. And Paul said that they will lose everything, even though their souls will be saved. Telling us that you're already saved, you're already in heaven. But when we get after our rapture, Christ is going to weigh all the things I did. And some things will vanish. Some things will vanish away. So I want to tell you that as you live in your life today, make sure, make sure, oh, make sure that you're putting gold to build. Make sure you're putting silver. Make sure you're putting precious stone to build because at the end of the day, your work will go through fire. Oh, your work will go through fire. Your work will go through fire. Your work will be tested by fire. And for some people, it will be wasted years. Their work, their work is basically based on the flesh. Their work is basically based on very, very weak foundation. It will not pass. And I'll give very specific examples. I believe we are in a day and age that if we are not careful, yes, we'll be raptured because we believe in Jesus. But we will go there and realize that we wasted our time on that. We will go there and realize that, wow, all the things I did count for nothing. It counts for nothing. Let me tell you, 
Uh, we are not going to be judged based on how much you have in your account. It does not matter. We are not going to be judged based on which house you live in. It does not matter. We are not going to be judged on who you married. It matters for earth. But when we get there, the judgment is not based on who was your husband, who was your wife. Or when we get there, it's not based on what degree you ended with. It's not based on oh, what rank you ended your career with. If that's all I have, when they pass it through fire, it will burn before my eyes. If all I have is what I can wear, what I drive, what the house I'm building, it will vanish. It's useless. It's useless. There are crowns for good works in Christ. And the first crown I want to talk about, I'll start off with the crown of life. Oh, so let's say it together, the crown of life. Oh, say it with confidence, the crown of life. And that you can reference in James chapter 1, verse 12, and Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. Afterwards, I will send the slide and the verses are on it. But I want you to write it down. The crown of life will be given to believers who stood against persecution because of their faith. Oh, the crown of life is for believers who through trials, persecutions, and some were even killed for their faith. That is their crown. And when we meet before Christ, he will call those ones out. Oh, he will call those ones out. Some were killed in Iraq because they believed. Some were beheaded by Al-Qaeda because they believed. Some were killed by Boko Haram in Nigeria because they believed. And on that day, when they resurrect and meet Christ in heaven, he will call those ones out. And they will step forward and Christ say, come and take of me crown of life. In our day and age, we don't want to suffer anything for his name. We, don't, we are even shy to mention his name because you think if you are too religious, if you're too spiritual, you may lose your job. But you've lost this crown. Just that mindset alone, you've lost this crown. Just that mindset, I may lose this. This is for people who have lost things for Christ. People who have died for their faith. Two days ago, I was talking to my wife and I remember I was an elder in Chicago. We went to this lady and the lady, anytime this lady prays, her husband gets angry. To the point when she comes to church, the man will change the lock of the house. So every time she comes to church like we're having church, she will go home and the lock is changed. It's not like she's staying late. She goes home around 1 p.m. 1 PM. The door is locked. She, her keys won't work. So as a church leader, I went to her and said, don't come to church. For the sake of the peace in your home, don't come to church. He looked at me and says, I'll come. I will come. I said, why? He says, I know you think you're saving my marriage, but I'm saving my soul. I am saving my soul. And recently I was talking to my wife and she said, will you adv advise someone like that again? I said, I didn't know what I know today. Yeah. Let no man Hold your faith captive. Let no man, let no woman hold your faith captive. There is a crown for people who suffer because of faith. They suffer because the, the family don't like him because of faith. Don't compromise. Oh, when I didn't know much, I'll tell you, it's okay. Don't pray loud. Keep quiet. But I'm here to tell someone, suffer for him because there is a crown. We are going to be raptured. And there you will see people from villages who stood for him. With all your comfort, you can't stand for anything. Because of promotion, it's as if you are not a believer. Just to be promoted, it's as if you are not a believer. What are we willing to sacrifice? What are we willing to sacrifice? I started reading the biography of, of Martin Luther again. I read it a long time ago. But recently, I felt the Holy Spirit lead him. Go and read about him. And as I was reading, listen. He had two PhDs at the age of 27. Two PhDs at the age of 27. He was almost graduating law school. He had an encounter with God. He says, two PhDs, I don't need it. Walked to the monastery and knocked on the door. 
Say, from today, my life is for him. From today. Stay there. Fasted till he was bones. And this man was so hunted by the presence of God. It's as if he, he, can't, he does not want to displease God. And I look at some of us, we don't even have what, the P before the H and D. Yeah. No. I'm, I'll be honest with you. People have left their life. People have left greater qualifications. But what you're forgetting is that what they are gaining is eternal. Let me tell you, when we get there, the crowns, you will always see people carry those crowns. And that's why people will be weeping in heaven. You know why? They, so, they will remember the opportunities to stand for Christ. And they remember how useless it was. Yeah. How useless it was. The people we are trying to please, how useless it, it will look. Let me tell you, there is a crown of life. Oh, there is a crown of life. I speak to young ladies listening to me. Don't bury your faith because of marriage, a promise of marriage. Don't bury your faith because of peer pressure of people who matter not. Of people who matter not. When he shared a testimony, he was in his church. Then he was a pastor in Florida. And this missionary came to him and says, oh, I'm leaving for Colombia. And he said, what's happening in Colombia? He says, God said I should go and die there. He says, yeah, God said I should go in Colombia. When I get there, I'll win souls, but I'll die there too. And Benin asked him, have you prayed against it? He says, what is there to pray against? What is there to pray against? He says, if I leave, what is there also to gain? I'm not saying go kill yourself. We're not going to die prematurely, but we've put too much value on temporary life. The rapture is coming. You will get there. You have faith. You will get there. But the real issue is that what are you willing to lose for him? There are people who've lost their lives. Oh, I tell God, after all this, I have told God I'm willing to walk away. After all this specialty program, I am willing to walk away. I'm willing to put all down and say, I'm a full-time minister. I have qualified for this, I will do it. If the need is there, I will do it. Because there's a crown of life. Oh, say crown of life. It's for people who have withstand persecution. It's for people who life has crashed on them for their faith. The time is coming. Persecution is going to start. Oh, in America, it's going to start. Oh, it's going to start. We'll get there. It is going to be obvious. Having to realize, I don't, uh, you know, I'm, I'm apolitical now. I don't care. Biden will not change my life. Trump did, Trump did not change my life. And he's not going to change my life. So either way, I'm blessed. Either way, I'm good. Either way, I'm covered. I don't need any politician for that. But this lady, the one who's been going through confirmation to become the Supreme Court judge, and she said, sexual preference. And all of a sudden, the media ganged up against her. How dare you use the word sexual preference? Homosexuals is not a sexual preference. It's, it's, a, it's the way they were created. And this lady had to apologize for using the word what? Sexual preference. Very soon, they'll come after us. We can say homosexuality is a sin. We cannot. Very soon, you'll see. Very soon, we can't talk about sin. We are hurting people. Oh, very soon they will crack down on us. But I pray you will stand. Oh, I pray your conviction will not change because there is a crown of life for those who endure persecution for Christ. The next crown is the crown of, of righteousness. Oh, let's say it together, the crown of righteousness. And this crown, the reference you can see from 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 19, and this crown specifically is for those who are desiring God and are waiting his coming. It's for believers whose goal is God's presence, God's influence in life. You know there are Christians who don't care? They don't care about anything. They have believed it's enough. But there's a crown of righteousness for people whose goal and desire is that God's, God's presence God's will, God's mandate must be done. 
They seek for his coming. And there's a reward for those. And I pray all of us would stand in for that. Oh, I pray that as a church, we will create the atmosphere that every aspect of your life, you want God. Oh, God loves those who want him. He rewards those who seek for him. Oh, you can be a believer, yes, and not care. It's like, hey, if he's there, he's there. He can do what he's doing. I'm doing what I'm doing. But for people whose agenda, and these are the believers, who when God says turn left, it's left for them. When God says go straight, it's straight for them. Because they are yearning for his presence and his coming. And I think this is an easy crown to get, isn't it? I was point the first one, crown of life, is not easy. It's not easy. Just even by marriage and with children, it's not easy. You cannot say, I'm going to Colombia to die. And you have three kids looking at you. No, I'll be honest with you. You cannot say, I'm, I'm leaving all my work. I'm going to be like John the Baptist. I'm going to the wilderness to preach. And you have your wife looking at you and says, where is the next meal coming from? And he says, there's locust there. And there's camel hair there. And there's honey there. And she said, no, I don't eat locust. I, 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 I don't like honey. And remember, your daughter is also allergic to honey. So right away, you can't even go. So I'm telling you, it's not easy. The crown of life is not easy. It's for people who are willing to sacrifice all for him. But I pray you will be able to. But for the crown of righteousness, you can. Say, I can. Oh, say, I can. On that day when we are raptured and they call for people who have earned crown of righteousness, I want to see all of you. Because I'll be standing there. I want to see you, mama. That you yearn for him. That in every aspect of your life, it was God. That is the crown of righteousness. And the next crown is a crown of rejoicing. That is also a, a crown I believe majority of us here will earn. The crown of what? Of rejoicing. This is for those who have won souls. And I love the name. Do you know what crown of rejoicing? Because anytime you see those people, you're excited. You're like, hey, if I had not spoken to you, you will not be here. And this is a crown given to people who have done the work of evangelism. They have won people into the kingdom. There is a crown for those people. Who have you won? At least I can count some people. At least I can count some people. And recently, God brought that desire back. And I told my wife, every week, a soul must be born or spoken to about Christ. Listen, there's a crown for those who have won souls. Oh, there's a crown for those who have won souls. And that crown, that crown is called crown of rejoicing. And let me tell you, these are literal. Some people think God, Christ is going to say good and good work job. No, 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 no. These are literal crowns we will carry. How do I know? Look at the 24 elders. And do you know what the 24 elders stands for? The church. When they see Christ being glorified, they take their crowns and what? And put it down. Then after what do they do? They put it back on. Oh, that we will be walking on street of gold. Some of us will have crowns. Others will be looking at people and say, wow, five, seven, eight. You're, you, you, you're caught gaze watching in heaven too. Wow, wow. And you go say, I didn't hear your name. Were you a popular evangelist? He says, no, 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 no. I, I, I was in Hawaii with you. He says, me? No, no, we're in Hawaii together. He says, but how many? He says, no, 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 no. Uh, the people I see, the homeless people I see. I asked them, do you want to give your life to Christ? And out of that 10 dead, and out of the 10, I got this crown. It's not hard to get it. It may be your father. Go to him and say, Baba, give your life to Christ. You, um, I want you to be saved. The goal is not a crown, but the goal is where the person is going. But most importantly, you'll be rewarded. It's easy to get this crown. Oh, it's easy. So far as you can see people, you can get the crown of rejoicing. Hallelujah. The fourth crown is the crown of glory. Let's say it together. Oh, let's say it with confidence. The crown of glory. And that can be referenced from 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 
5 verse 4. I couldn't see from the screen. Thank you, my wife. I hope it's not aging. <laughs> I hope so. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> I'll finish in 10 minutes so that we can ask questions. But is the crown of what? Glory. It's for those who have served in leadership. Those who have shepherded the sheep of God. Those who have taken their time and sacrificed for others. There's a crown called crown of glory for them. They can Peter, brother Eugene, what you doing? There's a crown for it. Leadership. Auntie Beverly, Auntie Sandra, the kids you are teaching, there's a crown for it. Oh, there is a crown for it. Me being a pastor, there is a crown for it. Elders, there is a crown for it. Dickens, there is a crown for it. That is why I don't complain. I know what, I, what I'm working for. I know what I'm working for. I don't complain. When people disrespect me, I don't care. When people don't know what I want them to do, I, it doesn't badge me because I'm not looking for a reward from them. When nobody gives me a gift, it's, I'm not looking for a gift from people. I'm serving because on that day, on that day, anyone you have sacrificed and led and worked for in the name of Christ, there is a crown of glory. And look at the name, crown of what? Glory stands out. You walk and everyone looks and says, wow, they laid their life for the other sheep. Why are you running away from Christian leadership? Oh, leaders who are always giving excuses. At this meeting, I can't come. I'm doing this. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. I keep saying this. The only investment I have in life is heaven. You can ask me why. I care less about money. My investment, my focus is heaven. You will never move me with any material thing. I talk about, I talk about aeroplanes just for fun. Trust me. It's, it's not a desire. I'll buy it. Yeah. I'll just, for the sake of my wife, I'll just buy that airplane. Say, dear, I've bought it. You can sell it the next day. But let me tell you, the truth is that I have put all my investment in this man called Christ. My work schedule, I tell you. My work schedule, I tell you. But immediately, I leave that door Anything he demands of me, I will do. My excuses are zero. Oh, this, oh, this, this, too much. this is too much. There is a day coming after the rapture. There is a day coming. You call some people and say, yes. You had every reason to say no. You have every reason to say, why will I serve these people, ungrateful people? Let me tell the people you pour your heart most for are the people who will disappoint you. Yeah, it's the truth of life. The people you feed more are the people who bite you. Yeah. I'm not saying you're ungrateful. I'm not saying you're ungrateful. But I don't need your thank you. That's the truth. I don't need you to say thank you. I don't need you to praise me for anything. Because the goal is not you. The goal is not here. The goal is not here. The goal is the after rapture. I'll meet the master. And you can see all those who served for my name come forward. And I want to be counted worthy. Worthy. Some people will want to go. And they will know that they don't qualify. They will know. that so you are full of excuses. Every meeting you don't want to come. Every visitation you don't want to go. Even calling people you don't want to do it. What crown? Anybody you want to sacrifice for is because you have a motive. You have your motive. You never do things for anybody for free. You're everything. You have a motive. I think Christ can see through that. I want. I do this because very soon they will be ordaining elders. I do this so that they will see me. I do this. If 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 pastor is not here, me, I will never do it. Me. If pastor comes, then all of a sudden. Your, your energy comes. Oh, he sees through those. It's hay. You're building with wood. Gold is when no one is watching. And you wake up. And you take the list of the church and start praying for them. 
pastor does not see it. Nobody can say thank you. But people come to church and they're giving testimony. He says, yes, it's working. You wake up in the morning, there's a burden to pray for marriages in the church. You start praying and marriages are standing up. And, 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 and people come give testimony. You, your name will never be mentioned. But heaven looks and says, wow, you stood your ground. Let me tell you, every spiritual victory has men who has, have their hands up. Every spiritual victory. Oh, sometimes, yeah. God will tell me to do certain things for some people. And when I see the result, they don't know. I don't need to tell them. But I know this is the reason. Oh, this is the reason. The reason is that that is what he rewards. Let's serve with dignity. Let's serve with gold. Oh, everything you can do. And some people are deceived to think this is titles. No. A leader is not by title. It's by rule. Some people are leading, but they have no titles. By their service. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. And the last crown is the incorruptible crown. This Per scripture is a crown that has been described, but I believe there are more. They are incorruptible crown. And the reference verse is 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25. <laughs> I think I'm growing. <laughs> now I need to get closer. And this verse, this crown, is for those, those who have to put pressure on their bodies to be Christ. So you see, it's close to a previous crown we've talked about. But this, you are not killed. The crown of life, you die persecution. But these are people who go through internal challenges themselves. But the whole goal is that I must obey Christ. And that's why Paul said, I beat my body under subjection that I may not be a castaway. And that I may receive the crown, the incorruptible crown. There are Christians who live loose. Everything is okay for them. Everything is okay for them. There is no discipline to themselves. But I'm telling you, the struggles you're going through. Sometimes you, 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 you wake up and the Holy Spirit instructively tells you fast. A writer immediately tells you that you open the fridge. And you're like, wow. And some of you say, this is America. <laughs> you open the phrase and say, this is America. There are some fasting is easy to fast because the process to get the food to eat will make you fast. Let me tell you, there is a reward for it. How you, and some of you, you have every right to have divorced your husband. But the only reason you said no is the word of God. So I have every reason to walk away. But because the Bible says so, I think God will not reward it. Because others walked away freely and they are going to go to heaven anyway. Why? They believed in Jesus. The, gate, the ticket to heaven is what? Jesus. Anyone who believes in Jesus is coming with us. But when we get there, that's where the sorting out will be. You believe, but you live your own will. You believe, but you never sacrificed anything. But I put my body under subjection. That is why living right is good. There's a reward for that. Not talking loose, controlling your body. There is a reward for that. Hallelujah. And I want to, I know I've not started the Antichrist yet. But I'll be pausing very soon for question. But I don't care about the Antichrist per se. The only reason I'll continue and talk about Antichrist sometime next week is because for those who stay to know who he is and how he's going to work and why they should not follow him. But for us, if you don't even know anything about the Antichrist, you're okay. Yeah. Yeah. In all honesty, if you don't know anything about the Antichrist and you make it to the rapture, there's nothing to know about him. But I will say it for those. <laughs> My uncle says those who want to stay. So I'll, I'll be ending in the next five minutes. So that I, I always want to leave room for questions because I don't want anybody to twist this truth for you. But there's a mystery I cannot end here with. There's a mystery I want to bring to your attention before we en enter into questions. 
Unfortunately, some people are going to lose their crown. Some people are going to lose their crown. Revelation chapter 3, verse 11. Jesus told them, said, Hold fast to what you have, that no man take away your crown. Unfortunately, unfortunately, after all these things I've told you, maybe you've won souls, you had a crown for that. You're in Christian leadership, you have a crown for that. You've controlled yourself up to this point, you have a crown for that. You have faced persecution, you have a crown for that. But it says, hold on. Hold on to the crown you have received. Because someone's goal is to cause you to lose it. Oh, this journey is what a race. Make sure on this race you don't lose your crown. Some of you have started well as Christian leaders. You are serving very well. Ah, five years. Will you still be doing this? I have seen people with me, spiritual, serving, sacrificing. Now they don't even go to church. I have friends. We used to go for evangelism Friday, Saturday, Sunday, every week for years. Now they don't want to have anything to do with the church. And it's not even more than 10 years ago. Hold fast that you don't lose what you have. Some of you is because of offense. A pastor did this, therefore take your leadership. Take your leadership. No, he never called you. The crown is not from him to you. Don't lose your crown because of offense. You've held up up to this point. You have a crown for, your, for, for the life you have lived. Why are you going to change? Why? Why are you going to throw it all away? Yes, it's tiring sometimes. Yes, it's burdening sometimes. sometimes. But for this crown, I must hold on to. Some people are going to lose their crown because their love is going to grow cold. They love now, but it's going to grow cold. Two years, and say, so, yeah, I still, I still at this thing, uh, I don't, I, I don't really know. No, before you realize, you've lost your crown. This morning, I came to tell someone, hold on to your crown. Don't lose your crown. Oh, don't lose your crown. And there are even pastors who've lost their crown. Recently, three pastors in California renounced their faith. One has written a lot of spiritual songs we sing. I don't want to mention names here. It's very spiritual song. It says, I don't even know if this is true anymore. I said, wow. Of all that you've done for Christianity, of all the songs the Spirit has brought through you, you have lost yourself. Don't lose your crown. You have come too far to turn back. No matter what it takes, no matter the price you must pay, stay the course. Oh, stay the course. What we have is the real deal. And the reason of the last reason for the rapture is because Christ is saving us from the great tribulation. Next week we'll talk about that. We'll start with the Antichrist and we'll get into that. When God starts pouring his wrath on the earth, you don't want to be on that. But don't lose your crown. I know sir, that I sense people are getting tired. But don't lose it. It's a long race. Run to the end. It's a long journey. Go to the end. Don't lose it. Some of you, as you're running, the devil will come inside, stand on the side, trying to get you to get off the track. Keep going. Keep running to the end. Because you have a crown you must run to. You have a crown you must run to. The last thing I would want to say, when we're in Prempa College, the old students came. That's, that's the best school in Ghana. The computer told me last time. Yeah, he announced it without. He's wearing blue today because of Presegba. Green is the best color. So we were in school. And they came and said, listen, 
you want to sponsor someone, pay the scholarship for sports. And they want to do a 5,000 mile run, 5,000 meters run, not mile, 5,000 meters run. And whoever wins is going to be given the scholarship. So they said the first three. And for some strange, we all, we all thought we could win. Pull leading, no matter what. I'm not getting there. So I turned. And on my way back, I was telling people, Master, someone has won already. And before I realized, I had a crowd going back. Yeah. So I said, Elijah, the one one is called Elijah Musa. He's my friend. So Elijah has won already. Where I saw him, let's go. Let's go back. Yeah. Let me tell you. A lot of the people who are discouraging, they are not even running. They are not even Christians. They don't even believe the things you believe. And they are the ones discouraging you. The one who is discouraging about this church doesn't even show up. He doesn't come here. And he's the one discouraging you. It's because God knows what he has done for you. Keep running. The devil knows what he's missing. Don't go back. No matter the price, don't lose your faith. Don't lose your faith. Next week, we'll talk about the Antichrist. The Antichrist. We'll talk about his agenda. And we'll talk about the great tribulation. And I'll try and end up with the, with the, with the final judgment. If not, have another week, we'll try and finish. So God bless you.